I'm Teo Nikolakis with Audioholics, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing and overview of the Q Acoustics Concept 50 loudspeaker. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. And if you like this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. So let's get started. I was first introduced to Q Acoustics back in 2017 when they entered the US market with the sound bass and M3 and M2 sound bars, which I had in for review. It was my first exposure to Q Acoustics products, and I was really impressed with the build quality, technology, and sound of the Q Acoustics sound bar lineup. Fast forward a year later, and then in 2018, Q Acoustics invited me down to Flux Studios in the East Village in New York City, where they gave me an advanced peek of their first speaker lineup in the US. I had the chance to audition the Q Acoustics lineup in a tuned room at Flux Studios. The monitor and towers sounded really good and it showed me that the UK-based Q Acoustics was a company that was serious about their sound. Now, it was also an especially memorable event for me as David Crosby happened to be recording there and I bumped into him in the reception area. So now we come to the Concept 50, this floor standing model which retails for $2,999. The speaker comes in three finishes, gloss black, gloss silver, and gloss white, and it features a whole host of really interesting design qualities for the price point. But before I get into the features, let's give this an unboxing and see these Concept 50s firsthand for a deeper look. So what we have here in the accessory box is we have the manual for the Concept 50. And this goes through all the different options here. Standard safety, different package contents, tells you a little bit about the 30 and the 90, gives you some basic um, assembly instructions for the isolation base, how to position speakers using the port plug and when and how to use the by wiring option. Under here, we actually have the base plate. We have the spikes. In case you're putting this on a carpeted surface, what's really nice is the spikes are leveling, uh, so you can actually unscrew that to level each of the different feet. And these options here are rounded for using on hardwood or another surface, which is what I'm gonna be using on this surface here. You have the screws and included Allen wrench to tie that to the base plate. And then we have the actual bracket here for the footing. And this is nice and solid and heavy aluminum. see here it's really beautiful um, it has a rubber coating on the bottom and then it's all nice shiny aluminum and it's got some real heft and weight to it there are five to install the front grille is magnetic 
and it comes with this protective cloth. And as you'll see, there's a hole to protect the tweeter for shipping. The speaker's finish is simply beautiful. You can see how glass-like and mirror-like the finish is all around. It looks exactly like that in person as you're seeing on camera. It's really giving a true reflection as to whatever is around it. Build quality, likewise, is top-notch. The cabinet feels totally inert. It's got a good knock to it and they feel solid and monolithic in person as they do on camera. So here's a first look at the Q Acoustics Concept 50. Weight and size. How will the Concept 50 fit into your environment? Well, the answer is pretty easily. The Concept 50 measures 40.4 inches tall, it's 12.6 inches wide, and it's 16.5 inches deep. The Concept 50 will fit easily into most decors. Its footprint is complementary, not imposing, and the rounded contours of the speaker's cabinet fool your eyes into thinking that it's smaller than it actually is. Weighing in at 50 and a half pounds, each speaker feels monolithic in its construction when you handle it. The Concept 50 has a dense cabinet structure and good heft without being cumbersome to maneuver. Build quality on the Q Acoustics Concept 50 is just top notch. It's as gorgeous up close and in person as it must look on camera. The gloss black finish is mirror-like and the finish quality is really exceptional. The front grille cover is magnetic, which is fabulous. It covers the drivers only and lets you admire the speaker's piano gloss finish. During shipping, Q Acoustics inserts a protective cloth between the grill and the speaker to prevent any marring or scratches. You'll note that they have a cutout for the tweeter in that cloth. The Concept 50's backplate has separate terminals for the high and low frequency drivers. I'll note that the speaker terminals are just superb. Binding posts are dense, high quality plastic, and if you're using spades or bare speaker wire, you'll find the binding posts incredibly easy to tighten confidently without stripping the screw threads. The supporting screw is also hefty. I reviewed speakers costing far more than the Concept 50, whose binding posts fail to give me the same confidence as these do. And if you completely remove the binding posts, you can access and remove the metal straps joining the high and low frequency terminals, so you can optionally bi-amp the Concept 50. The Concept 50 uses an MTM configuration, which means that you have a tweeter flanked by two base mid-range drivers. The Concept 50 uses a 0.9 inch fabric dome tweeter and two five inch woofers. The tweeter is crossed to the base drivers at 2.1 kilohertz. The tweeter is hermetically sealed and mechanically isolated from the front baffle to protect the tweeter from internal resonances generated by the mid and base drivers. The speaker's sensitivity is easy to drive. It's 90.5 dB with a nominal impedance of six ohms. Q Acoustics specs the Concept 50 with a minimum impedance of 3.6 ohms. That simply means that you can drive these speakers with any AVR or an integrated with a robust amplification section. Best Buy and Amazon $99 AVRs? Well, those need not apply here. Q Acoustics used finite element analysis and laser interferometry to analyze the cabinet and determine exactly where to put bracing. The cabinet employs point-to-point -point internal bracing, and that's a trickle-down from the Q Acoustics $7,000 Concept 500 speaker. The point-to-point -point bracing is applied to areas determined to be susceptible to low-frequency reverberations. Design elements that minimize vibrations. Well, 
Minimizing vibrations is a strong theme throughout the Concept 50's design. The Concept 50 has a two-plate suspension system that Q Acoustics says isolates the cabinet from interference caused by internal vibrations. Q Acoustics has mounted the crossover to the isolation base, keeping it free from vibrations and mitigating any electromagnetic influence from the drivers. You'll note that isolating the crossover from cabinet vibrations and driver interference is standard fare in well-designed high-end speakers. Q Acoustic says that what you experience as a result of that isolation is tighter stereo imaging and increased sound stage depth. Now, the driver assembly is fitted to an aluminum baffle, and that's before it's even fitted to the cabinet. Q Acoustic says that this design gives the proper acoustic sealing, dampening, uh, and operations, and minimizes the structural coupling. The cabinet itself is comprised of two layers sandwiched on top of a non-setting gel. Q Acoustics calls this their gel core cabinet construction, and it's designed to minimize high frequency noise and vibrations by turning them into heat. Using a non-setting gel between cabinet layers is another trickle down from their Concept 500 speaker. The difference being that the Concept 500 uses a three layer design with two gel cores. After I performed my subjective listening tests with music and movies, which I'll detail in the next section, I took the Concept 50 outside to perform some ground plane measurements by tilting the speaker towards the microphone situated on the ground. The Concept 50 was over 50 feet from the nearest boundary for these measurements. The Concept 50 measured well in the lower end and mid-range as a testament to the speaker's build quality and overall design. The ground plane measurements correlated to Q Acoustics published frequency response of the Concept 50 at minus 6 dB at 42 Hz. This is a speaker well suited to reproduce all but the deepest musical notes. During my listening tests in two different rooms with completely different electronics, I noted a laid back top end when listening to the Concept 50. The ground plane measurement shows a gradual dip in the response beginning at 2 kHz. Given the difficulties with ground plane measurements at the top end, I performed additional indoor gated measurements of the Concept 50 on axis at one meter to see how it correlated with the ground plane measurement. Ignoring the frequency response below 400 hertz, which can't be relied upon, you'll notice the similar trend in the speaker's response. Measurements taken at the main listening position of the left and right speaker, about 11 feet away, showed a relatively smooth though gradual dip in the top end above 2 kHz. I'll simply note that the Concept 50 lacks a tweeter level control to adjust the tweeter's output. You'll be left to rely on your AVR treble controls or applying EQ full range to compensate for any perceived softness in the top end. If you're looking at the Concept 50, and like the bottom end and the mid-range, I'd advise you to focus your attention on the speaker's upper mid-range performance to see if it aligns with your taste. So, what are my listening impressions? Well, I set up the Concept 50 in two different setups. First, I set the Concept 50 up in my theater space that's complemented with Vacoustic acoustical treatments and paired it with my Denon X8500HA and a Monoprice Monolith 7 amplifier. I also played the Concept 50 here in this far larger space with an Anthem AVM90 and Benchmark AHB2 power amps bridged in dual mono powering the Concept 50s. Now, I additioned the Concept 50s with Odyssey and Arc Room Correction turned off. My Rune music server directly connected to the Denon and serving to the Oppo UDP-205 in my setup as a Rune endpoint to the Anthem served as sources. So what's my overall impression? Well, I'll tell you that the Concept 50 just plays far larger than its footprint suggests. Imaging and soundstage are just excellent for the price point. You might hear some audiophiles who say they prefer monitors because of the way they image. Well, the Concept 50 will disabuse anyone of that misconception. 
putting on Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man by the Minnesota Orchestra, conducted by E.G. Uwe, is case in point. The Concept 50 create this beautiful, deep, expansive soundstage. The Concept 50's ability to paint such a soundstage is really one of the superb hallmarks of high-end speakers in general, and the Concept 50 in particular. Now, no matter the song or genre, the Concept 50 paint vocals clearly, dead center, and anyone visiting your space will easily be fooled into thinking that a center channel is active. Yeah. Now, I tested various speaker positions, and I preferred to listen to the Concept 50s towed in towards the main listening position. Now, let's talk about bass performance. The Concept 50s bass lines are punchy, dynamic, incredibly clean, and highly satisfying. Bass through the Concept 50s will be perfect for anyone listening to a range of music and wants a speaker capable of delivering the goods into the 40 hertz range. Now, playing the Concept 50s in both rooms, I'll convey to you that if you audition them and there's a hint of any bass bloat when listening to the Concept 50s, it's the speaker positioning and the room, not the speaker. Playing Holly Cole's cover of I Can See Clearly Now, the speakers are just doing an outstanding job of rendering bass lines tightly. There's no hint of any cabinet resonances or bloat of any kind. Now, turning to Ms. Cole's train song, the Concept 50s are articulating these bass lines clearly throughout the speaker's frequency range. Of course, they're not really capable of digging down to reproduce the lowest frequencies that are on this track, but for where the speaker plays, it's really doing a fantastic job. Now, having listened to these tracks countless times to voice speakers, the Concept 50 really hits high marks. Now, allow me to mention again dynamics. Bass lines come across from the Concept 50 with such life that this is really the perfect speaker for full range two channel music listening. Now, you won't immediately have the inclination to pair them with a subwoofer unless you plan on playing some subterranean bass. Now, even on Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones, Flight of the Cosmic Hippo, or Peter Gabriel's No Way Out, or Lord's Royals, Bass lines are really satisfying, and if you don't have these tracks already on your list of tracks to voice speakers with, you really need to add them to that. Now, let's talk about the mid-range a bit. The Concept 50 has a good, smooth mid-range. Vocals just snap into place, and female vocalists especially really come across with timbral accuracy. Female vocalists are beautifully and naturally rendered in space and time. So listening to Sade's Soldier of Love here, her vocals just, they come through dead center. And you can make out the layering of any accompanying vocalists and instruments. Now, if I turn to Imelda May and her track Can't Say, the Concept 50 just renders her vocals perfectly with great timbre. Her soundstage placement is dead center, and there's really a great dimensionality in where her vocals are placed. What you do get with the Concept 50 is a relaxed presentation of both vocalists and the soundstage. Now, if I turn to another classic, Alicia Keys on her classic Fallen, you feel like you're hearing this and just all these other songs all over again for the first time. And as I said, the soundstage in which the speakers renders these songs, the vocals, the instruments, just has really good definition, making it easy to discern the placement of those instruments in the soundstage, the layering of choral and vocal elements. Just once again, the Concept 50 just hits way above its asking price. Now, if you're considering the Concept 50 and you like the way it renders the bass in the mid-range, then be sure to pause and pay attention to its top end. Now, the top end is the one area where the Concept 50, for me, hit just for par at its price point. 
To me, the Concept 50's top end just comes across as polite and it lacks that desired sizzle that I'm regularly accustomed to experience on more expensive speakers. Cymbals, triangles, trumpets, and horns, they just didn't glisten as they do on either my Revel Ultima 2 Salon or RBH SVTR speakers with their Beryllium and AMT tweeters respectively. Now, and granted, each of those speakers costs multiples of what the Concept 50 does. So if you're asking me to try to describe how the top end sounds like, I describe it as though someone's applied just an oh so light Gaussian blur on the top end. And I think how you experience it will depend on your reference point. It's just slightly subdued, slightly relaxed, and uh, that's the only thing that for me where they didn't hit above par. So I'll put it another way. I felt as though the Concept 50 just lacked that audible cue that can fool you into thinking that, wow, that symbol sounds real or it's live. And I noted this on orchestral works and jazz, especially such as the trumpets on Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man and tracks like jazz variants from the Ozone Percussion Group. Turning to movies and general entertainment, the Concept 50 delivers the goods whether you're looking to bring audiophile grade performance to your TV sound or incorporate them as part of a home theater experience. The Concept 50 just did an outstanding job on all kinds of content. Vocals are crisp and precise and the dynamics that I mentioned earlier really shone through. Now, of course, Pairing the Concept 50s with a sub takes them to a whole other level. I paired the Concept 50s with these four Perlison D212S subwoofers. I mean, really just amazing reference grade subs in a 2.4 configuration with the Anthem AVM90. Now, on the Dark Star scene or on Maverick's Desert Mock Run from Top Gun Maverick, the one-two punch of the Concept 50s and the Perlison D212S just painted a huge soundstage and rounded out the bottom end, giving you that visceral impact that home theater is all about. Even as I'm sitting here and I'm having the Dark Star scene play in the background, I'm just experiencing the roar of the Dark Star engines. And now as he's about to fly over the Colonel, you just feel it right here in the room and it just really creates this awesome, awesome experience. So what's my take? Well, the $2,999 Concept 50 is one of the real deal values in high-end audio. This speaker does so many things right and hits above its price point time and time again. The Concept 50 is a thoroughly engaging and satisfying speaker from top to bottom. Now, in the Concept 50, Q Acoustics lets you experience technologies from its more expensive sibling that you won't find in other speakers at this price point. Now, I think that the Concept 50 will appeal to music aficionados and audiophiles who want a tower speaker characterized by solid dynamics, can image exceptionally well, paint an expansive soundstage and reproduce musical instruments with a punch without needing a complimentary sub. As I said before, the top end is the only glaring thing for me where the speaker just hit for par. Now, any speaker that handles music well is more than up to the task with movies and home theater, and the Concept 50 more than fits the bill for a premium home theater experience. So, if you've been looking to elevate your listening experience for a real taste of high-end audio, or you're looking for a speaker that punches way above its weight class, then without question, the Concept 50 needs to land on your list as a must audition. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You'll get direct access to us, you can ask questions, and you can even suggest topics for future programs.